Oh, hi everyone. I'm home. And with that comes this uh, live stream where I'll be answering any questions you may have about Cyberpunk 2077. I hope this is something you guys will enjoy. I, it's something that I promised I would do in my last video. So, you know, just ask away. I'll try to keep up with the chat. I'm sure there's going to be a couple people here and the chat's going to scroll by really fast. So just ask me any questions. I've already got one. Uh, Rami Koto asks, how's the soundtrack? Uh, it is, it's got that, like while we were engaged in firefights, it's got that like military type of thing going on there, but mixed with synthetic, you know, the, the stuff you would expect from a cyberpunk soundtrack. It's got synth in there, uh, and it, it sounded fantastic, honestly. It really brought out the mood in each scene, whether we were engaged in a firefight or whether it was one of those tense moments where we were negotiating or having conversations with some of the game's NPCs. So the soundtrack was pretty phenomenal. Uh, I, I couldn't, that's not the thing I could concentrate on because I was so, um, I was so focused on, on, on writing down everything that I was seeing rather than what I was hearing, but uh, my brother was next to me and he was telling me how awesome the soundtrack sounded. And I, I could hear bits and pieces of it, but, you know, there, there was just a lot going on on screen and uh, the soundtrack was kind of like one of the things that were on the back burner. But from what I've listened, yeah, it, it did a pretty fantastic job in, in, in realizing the, the mood and bringing out the best of each, each scene, each sequence we were shown. So, yes, there's synth. Do, do keep that in mind. It, it sounds like a cyberpunk soundtrack. Uh, De Castro reviews, can you kill civilians? That's not something that uh, they showed or disclosed, but you could draw, the, the player could draw their weapon at any time. And at one point they like pulled out their gun and pointed it at a cat to shoot the cat. They didn't do it, but they were like, you know, just messing with us. But you can draw your gun and I think you can pretty much, you might be able to kill anyone, but I don't know, not confirmed. Uh, but if you do, I'm assuming there are consequences. You'll probably get wrecked. I mean, the 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 police force, the law enforcement in in the world of cyberpunk is no joke. They will shred you to pieces. So I think it would it's going to be a case of you can, but you're probably not going to get away with it unless you're like super high level. But we'll see. Don't take that as confirmation quite yet. Just know you can pull out your gun at any time, though, in, in the, when you're walking around the city and stuff. Um, a lot of people saying hi, showing their love. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, dilapidated banana. Is she thick? I'm assuming you're talking about female V. She's uh, quite attractive. You know, I, I guess attractiveness is subjective, but I found her quite attractive. And, uh, you know, nice curves and proportions and all that. I don't know, is that what... The answer you're looking for. Mm. Uh, D. Walters, uh, the crossover event with Layman was the second best thing after uh, Cyberpunk 2077 footage reveal. Do you think the gameplay you saw would work with a controller? Oh, absolutely. It would absolutely work with a controller. I believe the demo was being played with a controller, um, but... I didn't pay attention to whether this was being played on like PS4, Xbox, or PC, but I believe uh, it's confirmed now based on multiple impressions that this was running on a high-end PC, and it looked that way. The graphics in this were just, it looked too good to to be running on, on current-gen consoles. Uh, that's not to say it won't release on current-gen consoles, I just think that what we see on current-gen will be, will we'll have some significant downgrades. Uh, Unless they pull some kind of magic. Who knows? I mean, towards the tail end of a console generation, developers can pull some crazy shit. So, you know, I they might prove me wrong and impress me by putting out a game that has very similar graphics to what we saw from, from what I saw in the behind-the-scenes closed-doors demo. 
but based on what I saw, it just, it definitely had a next gen quality to it. But that's also speculation. Um, PC requirements, they didn't say anything about that. Witcher three like quest system. Not sure. Like I don't I don't know if there's gonna be like billboards where you can just pick up random quests, but in terms of like the the choices involved in all that, yeah, there's gonna be dialogue along the way. The choices you make does affect how things can play out. And uh, in the demo that I was looking at, there were just there was a lot of dialogue choices you could make, and things could have played out in any number of ways. It, it just it's just branching path after branching path, and yeah, I mean obviously we only saw one version of the mission that they showed, but entire segments could have been skipped or entire new segments could have played out based on what choices you would have made so there's a lot we didn't see from that one mission is the feeling that i got at least uh cynics is there a strip club um we the player never walked into one but i did see a building at one point where like the exterior had like a strip club vibe to it I don't know if I'm mis misremembering this, but it was like like pink windows and and uh, like I I believe there was like a graphics of a of a female on like a strip pole, like the silhouette of that like plastered throughout those the 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 window and so it had a strip club vibe to it. So I I would assume yeah, like this is the world of cyberpunk has those kinds of vices, so I, I would assume. And this being a mature game, nudity already being a thing, I mean, in, one of the first things we see early in the mission is like uh, uh, a, uh, a dead-looking naked female body, and it's just like a really fucked up situation. She's in like this iced bathtub, and you and the player character had to like take her out of there and like call the trauma team and stuff like that. So, I, yeah, I would assume, yes, there are strip clubs here. Um, let's see. Oh, my God, there's so many comments. Let's start with... Uh... Oh, okay, a lot of people are asking about the voice protagonist. <sighs> let's see. I, I believe the, the, the one we heard in the trailer, the one you guys saw, that's the, the voice actor for the male protagonist. Uh, the female basically sounded like a female version of that style of voice acting. It was this sort of, like, youthful edginess, which I don't know quite how to feel about. I would say if there was one aspect about the demo that I was, like, a little iffy about, it was the the protagonist's voice acting. I personally would have liked a silent protagonist, um, but I, I would be fine with a voice protagonist if they were, like, excellently voiced. With this one, I'm not sure yet. On the one hand, it kind of fits the whole tone that the game is going for. Just this sort of rock and roll style of cyberpunk. With, you know, elements of Blade Runner and the darker elements are definitely there. As evidenced by that first mission, that first segment of the demo we saw. Just, there was a lot happening there that you're like, damn, that's dark. But at the same time, when you look at the city, the vibrancy of it, and the crowds, and the hairstyles and the, the way they're dressed and there's this attitude that emanates from cyberpunk 2077 that is i think unique to mike pondsmith's uh vision of that world so uh you know we'll see i, I feel like i have to see more of how this all plays out but i feel like there, there are certain scenarios where that might detract from the more serious moments so if they can dial it back a little bit sometimes it felt a little too over the top so if they can dial it back and uh, let the serious moments stay serious. I'm all for cheesy dialogue, by the way. I'm I'm not, but but only if that's like a self conscious thing. If they're trying to be serious, but the voice acting uh, inadvertently comes off as over the top or cheesy, then that's a problem. So I hope they'll tweak that a little bit. The voice acting is the for the protagonist is the one thing that I'm a little concerned about. Everything else, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you how mind-blown I was. I've expressed that in multiple videos already. Uh-huh. 
uh, Chris Righteous, uh, despite what the devs are saying about this game releasing on PS4, do you think this is a next-gen game only by the time it releases? I This is a game that will be out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. I think it's going to be one of those cross-generation games. It's going to be out for both current-gen and next-gen. Pretty sure about that. The general gist that I got from the developers based on what they were saying and based on uh my conversation with mike pondsmith is that the game might still be like more than a year away i i would say it my prediction is 2020 and this is something that my sources have expressed as well that 2020 is might be the target goal so and by that point i feel like we're gonna see the next xbox we're gonna hear about the next playstation so yeah, cross-generation is, is a very safe bet, if you ask me. Um, Guillermo Lorenzo, do you know if they're planning same-sex romance options? This is something they've already confirmed. Yes, uh, you as the player character can play, uh, you can play it straight, you can play it, you can be gay. The NPCs, the romance options, there will be, you know, bisexuals, gays, straight, like all, all walks of life will be represented in terms of romance options, so, you know? Uh, that, that's, uh, I think that's something that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Vasishta Polijala. If you look down, can you see your feet? Yes, you can. This has been confirmed. I believe I saw that as well. And also when you're, like, doing some maneuvers, like vaulting over or sliding, you can, like, like when you're sliding, you can see V's leg as you're sliding. When you're vaulting over, you can see, like, the whole thing happening in first person and when you look down and walk around you can see everything down there so you know I, I know there's some concerns about with how first person won't allow you to look at your character but you know you can kind of like look down and see yourself with all the equipment that you gave your character so that's i think one thing that will mitigate that um let's see uh shadow blazer young how dense is the world i think i've i've expressed this multiple times before it is incredibly dense the most impressive thing about the demo was that the world felt so lived in and so alive just all the little micro details like the way npcs are animated based on like what walks of life they may be from to just the vast city landscape that I, that the trailer is actually pretty representative of the kind of scale you will see in, in, in this game. But just the trailer like cuts a lot of, a lot of different footage together. The, what, what was impressive about the demo is that it was just seamless from beginning to end. It was just, there was no real cuts except for like, there was an intro mission and then a transition to like another whole sequence but within those confined those those uh within those missions it was just straight through exploring the city no seams it's just on a scale uh, this is open world on a scale i've never seen before vertically at least so and, and it's and, and there's just so much going on all the time when you're walking around there's always something happening uh, when you're walking in the mega building, you see like a little pit fight thing happening where there's like a sparring match. Uh, there are people doing all kinds of things, leaning on balconies, smoking, uh, just or you can see bums just kind of like laying there on the... I don't know, I, I, I don't remember every single detail, but, you know, ads everywhere, just... Just all kinds of things, all kinds of things happening. It was insane. Pretty dense to answer your question it's really really dense and again just watch the trailer and look for all the little the, like the the footage of showing the city and and all those people walking around the car zooming past like that's the trailer I, I, it looks like it's a cinematic thing like it but but it, it it's fairly accurate representation of the gameplay demo i saw graphically and in terms of just what's there in the world um let's see alexander zapatier is this an exclusive to is this an xbox is this an xbox exclusive young no it is ps4 xbox and 
Xbox One and PC and probably the next gen stuff as well. Um Yayang Yayang Aro, why is there a 45 minute gameplay shown on E3 but no video published on YouTube? From what the developers have said, they wanted to get feedback from members of the press first and then use that feedback to give the to give you guys the public sort of a more just a better version of the demo, more accurate version of the demo, something more representative of the, of the final product. This is this was just them testing the waters. And they also wanted to, you know, keep the tradition of E3 word of mouth, letting that hype things up first, and then them taking that feedback, using that to just make the game better, and then presenting something that they feel is ready for the public. This they felt was ready for... To, to give members of the press, people who have like a voice and influence, a vertical slice of the game and for them to give a general idea. But if they're going to show something to the public, they want what they showcase to the millions of people out there to be the real deal, to be ready, to be representative of the final game. So for now, they're keeping things kind of uh, in, a, in a small circle. And I think that makes sense personally. I know it's frustrating that you guys can't see what I saw. And I really don't think even every all the hype that I've emanated, it's just not enough to... You just have to see it to understand where I'm coming from. Why all my doubts about the first versus third person. Why, why all of that faded away. Why I walked out of that theater just mind blown and speechless. If you're a fi fan of cyberpunk like I am, this this is a dream come true. So, just just I, I would say just wait until they're ready to show you guys a version of the game that they think is is the right version. Is all I'll say about that. Mm. Abel Pantoya, how was the gameplay? Could it be more like Battlefield, or is it different than any other shooter game out there? It is more, it's a shooter game with, no, 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 it is an RPG with shooter elements. The shooting looked really good, and it looked like they worked really hard on making sure that the shooting feels fast-paced and visceral. It's more akin to, I would say, like, The Division, where you see, like, the health bar, and you can see numbers popping up as you shoot the guy, or Borderlands, but I think they've fine-tuned it so... Enemies aren't too much of bullet sponges. You do have to shoot them a couple times before um, before they you, you take them down. But it, it was fast-paced enough. Enemies died fast enough where you could, like, really zip around, shoot, uh, take one down, and move around, and, and handle multiple enemies at the same time without it feeling like you're constantly just focusing on one person. You can, you can like, really pull off some cool combos and maneuvers and... And you really can feel like a badass with your cybernetic enhancements and all the mobility options that the game offers. Sliding, jumping, wall running, and all that stuff. So, pretty fast paced, lots of mobility, like aspects of like Titanfall in there maybe? Like like little little glimpses of that? Again, just in terms of mobility. Um, but yeah, it's not like boots on the ground like battlefield where it's sort of more where it feels like you're a person here you definitely feel a little more like a superhuman because of all the cybernetic enhancements all the um, abilities and attributes that you possess that would only come from cybernetic enhancements but you don't feel like a superhero per se you're a little more than human, but you're not like a god. You can you can get wrecked. You can die. The enemy. In fact, the player had to constantly use this like injection to like recover health when when they kept getting shot because otherwise they would just die. Uh, it was like a stim pack looking thing, and so they would run around, stim pack, shoot, you know, slide, take cover, shoot, um, and and do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, use the reflex booster. Which, it's basically like fear where it just slows down time, bullet time style. 
And uh, now it's important to note that in bullet time, it the character almost runs at normal speed while everyone else slows down. So it's like it's like the player character's overall speed and stuff that all that increases. It's like, um, yeah. So, it's not like time slows down and you're just... It feels like you're moving in at normal speed when you're in reflex mode. That's really interesting. And that allows for all... A bunch of more options for mobility, for... Just some really badass combat moments. Uh, let's see... Kenny Lean asks, uh, Witcher 3 feel? No, uh, I mean, it, that, just the trailer alone should let you know this is not Witcher, this is Cyberpunk. Very different games, honestly. They're like on opposite ends of the spectrum. It feels like Witcher in the sense that it's got a lot of the core tenets of focusing on narrative, on player choice, and being able to drive the narrative in various different ways, being able to tackle missions in a wide variety of ways. It's got, like, the trademark... It, I would say it feels like a CD Projekt Red game, but it's uh, definitely a departure from Witcher in, in terms of the genre, the tone, and all that. But it's very much a CD Projekt RPG, if that's what you mean. So, rest assured there. Uh, multi Lolo K, can you hijack any vehicle? Uh, it's already... While we didn't get to see... The player character stealing vehicles, CD Projekt Red has already come out and said that you can steal vehicles in this game. So, yeah, I'm assuming that's something you can do. I'm assuming some vehicles are going to have security measures. So if you have, like, high hacking skills, you'll be able to hijack higher-valued, just uh, more fancier cars and stuff like that. So I'm sure there's a whole system there for that. But yes, you can steal vehicles in this game. Um... Uh, Oasis, hi, Yong. Yeah, I just wanted to know if, from your personal opinion, if you think in the game between day and night, will we see things only from a certain time of the day? Uh, this is something that the CD Projekt Red team hasn't talked about. I don't think anyone's really asked this, but I would have to assume that yes. Night, night cyberpunk and day cyberpunk are very different. Uh, just like in any city, just... It's a whole different environment when it's day versus when it's night. Absolutely, I. this is speculation because, again, this isn't confirmed, but it wouldn't make sense to me if the nighttime didn't have certain different uh, things that you can only see at night versus things you only see at day. Like, it, that only seems par for the course with a game like this. Mm-hmm. Star Knight, is it worth this game was FPS for you? I was a skeptic. I, I was concerned. I wasn't like fully bashing the game for being FPS only before I saw the demo, but I was like, oh man, I, I am a fan of being able to see my character within the world. But after watching the gameplay demo, this I'm I'm this game benefits from being FPS. It's worth that this game is FPS. It's just like you, you're seeing through your character's eyes. The HUD is representative of what the character is seeing. And just the city is so... Again, it's so lived in that it benefits from you just looking from your character's eyes. And just a lot of the... A lot of interesting moments like when you're getting cyberware implanted into you like you're getting cybernetic enhancements the surgery happens live in first person perspective so you see something that i detailed in my last video was you see your eye sort of being pulled out by this like this this, this thing this contraption and then you you see from there from the perspective of the eye and and so you can see it being moved around and then they the the Ripper Doc takes the enhanced version of the eye and you can see that being popped back in and your eye comes back online, the HUD changes a little bit. And then like when you're driving around the, the city in the backseat of a car while you're getting a mission briefing from the fixer that you that the player character came in contact with and you see the city zoom past, you can look around the car, see all the incredible detail of the interior 
and also then look towards the NPC, engage in conversation with them. And then after all that, you walk out the car seamlessly. You're looking around. Things are happening around you. Um, I, I was sold at that point. Because it's, it's, it's important to note this isn't a first-person shooter. It's a first-person RPG. And they leverage so much from that perspective that I ultimately, I think, the game will be better off. Like Witcher... That wouldn't really work in, in first person because it's a lot of sword play. So you want to see the character, you know, dancing around with the sword and doing all these crazy maneuvers. With Cyberpunk, there is going to be melee from what I've been told. We didn't see much of that. But, but uh, it, it's obviously a lot of it will be shooting. So in that respect, it the first person perspective lends itself to that. But also just... The kind of world that cyberpunk is, it, it's a lot of confined spaces. It's not like wild, like, like, uh, grasslands and all these wide open areas. It's, it's a metropolis. And while there are some wide open spaces in terms of when you're traveling around with the car, once you get to like a city, it, it's a lot of alleyways, corridors, interiors, and the third person, a uh, third person perspective would, would get in the way. I think third person works in Witcher because the world, the world is so open. In Cyberpunk, everything's so much more condensed that third person could, the camera would kind of, it would just get in the way from what I've seen. That's how I felt. But all things considered, just all the little details they add in the first person perspective and also just the being able to look at the city from the your character's point of view just the vertical the verticality of everything it's worth it i'm telling you i was converted as a skeptic i was converted and i think a lot of people are going to are going to think the same once they actually see the demo the the some gameplay like a lot of the press members did Um, Envy Solid Blaze, what are you more, what are you more excited about, Death Stranding or Cyberpunk? After seeing Cyberpunk, uh, as much as I love Death Stranding, I've got to say, Cyberpunk just, yeah, it, it toppled Death Stranding for most hyped game right now. I think once, once we see more of Death Stranding, that could change, but it's just, like, I got to see 50 minutes of live gameplay for Cyberpunk 2077, <clears throat> and it was 50 minutes of Bliss. So, you know, it's not a fair comparison because I still don't know what Death Stranding is, ultimately. <clears throat> but based on everything I've seen so far, as of right now, yeah, De uh, like Death Stranding is up here. Cyberpunk just, it blew me away in ways that I never imagined. So right now, yeah, Cyberpunk is the more exciting game for me right now. Brandon J. Larry, is there going to be Countryside 2? I'm not sure, but I believe there was a portion in the trailer <clears throat> where we saw these like hillbilly looking folks and i know that nomads the one of the classes in the cyberpunk they're sort of you know they inhabit sort of the exterior of the city less populated areas I, and i know some some of the nomads are like some of the nomad gangs are like farmers and stuff so i would imagine there will be some elements of that won't be super prominent, but I think there will be a couple of areas that are like that, based on what I know about the cyberpunk lore and world. Uh, Henrik Karlstrom, did you see any nighttime? No, this all took place in daytime, and I think the developer said that the reason they did this, that they showed daytime, was because the details of the world are much more prominent during daytime, because you can just see everything, so... Looking at it that way, I think maybe it, it made sense that they showed daytime, because during the nighttime, a lot, of, a lot of the details might get lost. Like, the skyline will look beautiful, but the minutia of what's happening, like, what do the buildings look like? What's happening inside here, and what are the people doing? Like, that, that could get lost, because things would be much darker and whatnot. So, maybe showing things during the, day, during the daytime for the purposes of showing the press, this is what the world is like might have been a good idea. 
But uh, don't be concerned. There will be lots of nighttime segments in Cyberpunk 2077 from what we were told. That Blade Runner aesthetic will be there. It's an important aspect of the 2020 tabletop. And it's certainly going to be an important aspect of 2077. So, yeah. And, I mean, you see glimpses of nighttime in the trailer in, in that, that you guys saw. So, just glean at that and, you know, that's, that's going to be a, a representation of, of what night will be like in the final game. Adrian Castro, did it give a more Blade Runner feel or Fifth Element? I'm actually not familiar with Fifth Element. Let me look that up real quick. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, I would say, yeah, yeah. Actually, I it, it's definitely um, <laughs> the the sort of um, the '80s rock and roll type of feel, the punky. So that's Fifth Element. I would say somewhere smack in the middle. It's not like the darker stuff isn't there, as I've said before. Like it, it's you can tell it's a fucked up world. They don't, they don't like try to mitigate that in any way. They don't try to lessen the fact that this is a savage city and uh, setting. But you know, you can glean some moments of of, of silliness, of of you know, of, of, of vibrance. NPCs doing all kinds of things. I I suspect there will be like humor in this game as much as there will be very dark very gritty very disturbing moments so smack in the middle i would say uh i ivan certeza is the game open world oh yeah oh yeah it, it is absolutely open world and there's zero loading screens from uh the demo that they showed us i use the word seamless a lot but i need to emphasize this game is incredibly seamless when you're, you know, taking an elevator and you see sort of the multiple floors of the mega buildings. And you can also look out. Like the elevator, you can like, it's not like a closed elevator. You can kind of see out a little bit. And you can see, again, the, the multiple floors of the mega buildings. You can look out and see the city itself kind of coming into view. And then you seamlessly walk outside. And you can interact with everything without so much as a pause, break, or loading screen. So yes, open world, absolutely. Uh, SAC 0FA55 is the driving smooth. It looked pretty smooth. I wouldn't know because I I wasn't the one at the helm. I wasn't the one controlling the game, so I couldn't tell you how it feels. But the player who was controlling the car was doing a pretty good job, and it looked pretty smooth. And at one point, there was like a car chase shootout. That was really cool. So at that point, the player character tells Jackie to take the wheel and um, while they're driving for you, the your partner, you can like pop out and like in first person, you can like look out the window with your gun and start shooting. Yeah, it just, it looked good. It, it reminded me a lot of Grand Theft Auto in terms of feel, I would say, but in a cyberpunk setting. So it's unique in that regard. It looks pretty smooth. Um, let's see, Eolam Munoz, number of NPCs are there? Um, I don't know if you're talking about crowds in terms of the crowd, like countless, honestly, I couldn't count them all, a lot, lots of people walking around, it's a bustling metropolis, at least the segment that we were shown, this, uh, the center city, or the city center or whatever. Um, so yeah, in, in that sense, there's lots in the demo that we saw in terms of the people you, that the player character interacted with, there were just like a handful. They were trying to keep the mission focused. They didn't want to like branch off into a million things. They focused on one storyline and within that storyline, there was the player character uh, alongside Jackie, who was your, your partner, someone who's like by your side, uh, doing missions with you, shooting with you. And then, like, Meredith, the corporate, uh, Dexter, the fixer, um, Royce, the, the psycho gang dude from the Maelstrom gang. And uh, the, the corporate had, like, a couple of bodyguards with her who had some dialogue. and th So, yeah, there were a couple of interactable NPCs there. But, you know, I, I think in the final game, there's just going to be countless... NPCs. There's just going to be tons. And if Witcher 3 is any indication in terms of 
how many NPCs you can talk to, take quests from, and and, and interact with. It, Cyberpunk is going to push things even further, so yeah. I would expect tons of NPCs, tons of quests, tons of choices, tons of lives in this world you can influence as the player character. Um, Mohammed Rashid Zadeh, how huge is the open world? I've already kind of talked about it, so I'll skip that. Damn huge. Incredibly huge. Impossibly huge, even sometimes it looks. Especially vertically. Mm. Uh, chemo, is the game like GTA 5 in the way that the world around you is? Some might say there are some resemblances, but it's just, it's got its own flavor. And since things happen in first person, it's a lot more immersive than GTA 5. Where, you know, like GTA 5 also has like some loading here and there when you go into certain edifices or certain like there's some you can see some cuts in between uh in in cyberpunk everything it never cuts away from live gameplay you're always just there whether you're being given a mission briefing whether you're meeting up with someone whether you're walking into a building or walking outside a building whether you're taking the elevator whether doesn't matter what you're doing uh everything just I guess the only thing that cuts a little bit is like sometimes there will be a cutscene and so you're in first person, it'll transition to third person to show the cutscene play out and then it'll transition back to first person. That's the only real break that I saw and it's not even a break really because the cutscene's happening within the context of what you're doing now. So yeah. Um, Sir Farrell, was the UI covering most of the screen? No, the UI was actually pretty minimal. Everything was confined to the corners. Uh, I saw health on the top left, and then whenever an NPC calls you on the, like, wirelessly, then you'll see, like, their face pop up on, uh, I guess for you guys it would be here, like, it's a health bar here, and then, like, a little face cam thing here, uh, occasionally, and then, like, on the bottom corners, there would be stuff like ammo count, alternative fire modes, and other bits of information, so... And, and they were all, like, they weren't, like, huge. They were, like, pretty, a decent size where it's readable, but small enough where it doesn't get too much in the way. Um, and also the HUD itself, when you are looking around, any objects you can interact with, you'll see, like, little markers. So if there's, if you're looking around and there's a door you can open, it'll, like, there'll be, like, a little bleep that says door, like, a little red um, text that says door, and it'll tell you how to interact with that, how far away it is, and... So, yeah, when you look around, you can see what you can interact with. Uh, now, I'm assuming Cyberpunk will allow you to customize your HUD. So, if you don't want to see, like, the numbers popping up on wh while you're shooting enemies and stuff like that, if you don't want to see too many little bleeps of things you can interact with, then i believe it, it, it like it's been said that you can customize that stuff so you can tailor the hud to your liking so that's that's really good i think um jack lewis hey is the hair and clothing customization like fallout where every piece of hair and clothing npcs have uh, every piece of hair and clothing npcs have can be used by the player um I'm not sure about that. There are obviously elements of customization. At one point in V's apartment, you can see the player character kind of go to like this closet area and there is like the jacket that they decide to wear and there's some other clothing on the side that um, the player might have been able to interact with. So you will be able to change your clothes, um, give yourself different pieces of, of, of armor, whatever weapons, gear, everything is customizable and it'll your look will change based on what you equip your character. I'm not sure if you'll be able to, like, pick up that one t-shirt some random NPCs wearing, loot that, and then wear that. I don't know if it'll be to that extent. Uh, like, in Witcher, for example, what you could equip were confined to armor. So, I, I think it might be closer to that, but I'm not 100% sure how far the customization goes. Um, but there, there is customization, there is an inventory system, 
you can equip your character with a wide variety of of clothes and armor that affect your stats as well. Gives you additional defense, additional like um, stats for having for interacting with NPCs and having being able to have successful conversations and being persuasive, stuff like that. That so there's a um, there's a lot you can do in that regard, but in terms of aesthetics, how far you can take that. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And CD Projekt Red, I'm sure they'll talk more about that down the line. Mm hmm. Let's see. Randomness, compressed, and incurated. Are there any unique mechanics that stand out? Any unique mechanics? Um. I would say that this is a game that takes a lot of familiar mechanics and then makes something new out of it using those existing tools. I mean, I guess the Mantis Blades was something that was just truly awesome. You can, like, stick them to walls and, like, like climb on walls with that. I suppose that's not, like, a revolutionary new thing, but it's just... what's What Cyberpunk does great is take established things and then give it its own flavor. So, like, wall climbing and wall running and stuff like that, it, that's not, like, groundbreaking, but the way it's presented in this world is very unique, it's very cool, and it's just mind-blowing for, especially for me, for for someone who is a fan of, of cyberpunk. Um, like, the reflex booster, it's not like bullet time is a new thing, but the way it works in conjunction with just the visuals, the cyberpunk visuals, some of the mechanics, some of the shooting mechanics, and uh, some of the unique weapons that this game offers, it, it, cr it, it feels unique even if the individual components may not be. Just when it all comes together, it, it, that's when it feels unique. Uh, let's see, let's see. White Rationalist, can you call your car like Roach? I don't know, I don't think so. Like the, the player character in this demo, they walked up to the car and the car wasn't even theirs it was Jackie's and we just kind of walked up to the car but it wasn't like you could press a button and the car would automatically drive itself to your location though I'm not going to rule out that that could be a feature it's just it's something we didn't see in the demo destroyer of thoughts are there any vanity items like cosmetics well there's stuff like tattoos you can give your character so I'm sure there's some stuff like that but in terms of what you wear I think everything you wear will have some influence on your stats, on your, um, yeah, on, your, on things like defense and they grant you certain perks. So I'm not sure if there are, uh, say for like some like character features like tattoos and stuff, I'm not sure. There are cosmetic only things you can do here, but nothing has been confirmed in, in that regard. Again, we know s features exist, like what features exist in this game, it just... We don't know to what extent that will go. Like, we know there is character customization. We know you can outfit your character with different clothes. We know all these things. The length to which they'll take that is, you know, is yet to be determined. Um, XLNDLX. Do the classes flow with gameplay, uh, with the gameplay well? Um, here's the thing, the, they didn't highlight much of the game's progression system, how classes would work and stuff, they, they, through word of mouth, they told us that as you play through the game, you'll be able to lean into one of three cyberpunk classes, solo, netrunner, and techie, and then from there, as you play the game, they hinted at, like, being able to, to gain perks from all the other classes, like Rocker Boy and Cops and nomads and fixers and media and stuff uh, based on like, like i don't know they, they were very vague about that part where they said you can take perks from other classes so i'm not going to make assumptions uh but in terms of what we were shown in this demo the one there was one situation where we were locked in a room this was when the virus went off and uh, everything went on lockdown in the Maelstrom gang hideout. Then that that was a situation where, like, depending on what what class you lean more towards, you could 
get out of that situation in different ways. So if you were more hacker, netrunner centric, you could like hack a keypad and just open the, the front door. Easy. But then like if you were techie, there was like a fuse box that you could like tinker with and that would like activate a, a door like somewhere up in the, some corner and you could go up there and then it would lead to a vent. The, what, what, I, what I saw in the demo, the player character was more techie centric. So that's the route that they took. They fiddled around with the, the fuse box and when they try to hack the, the terminal for the front door, they, they were basically told that, you know, the, they, they weren't a high enough, like they didn't have enough hacking skills to, to do that. So I, I gleaned some elements of how class abilities will affect how you can tackle missions. But it's not like they did a whole presentation on how does leveling and classes work. So it, it seemed like the, the classes will have a significant impact on how you play the game. But to what extent? I don't know yet. Uh, Steel Shadow, did they show anything about Trauma Team? Yes, in fact, in the very first mission of the game, or in the very like first portion of the gameplay demo, it was a mission where you had to like rescue, like find some some a woman who had been kidnapped, and so you go through the scavenger sort of uh, base or hideout, and you shoot a bunch of guys, and you eventually get there, and she's in in the bathroom inside a bathtub, and I believe the scavengers were harvesting body parts from her, and there was like something that dampered uh, the trauma team's ability to track her. So that's something that I think the player character removes by jacking into her brain and then like seeing like what's going on there. And then I, I, at that point, the player character picks up the the naked sort of uh, corpse look at corpse like female body who's still alive, barely carries her out to the balcony. And then like a chopper, like a futuristic looking cyberpunk helicopter comes in. The trauma team walks out. And, uh, yeah, they, they have, they're, like, armed. They point at the player and go, hey, stand back! Stand back! And that's what the trauma team is, for those who aren't familiar, familiar with the cyberpunk lore. It's almost like health insurance. It comes at a steep price, and only the richest of the rich can afford this service. But for those who do have trauma team at the ready, whenever they sense that their client is, is in a precarious situation health-wise, they'll deploy... They'll pull all stops to ensure that this client is safe and that they uh, receive the medical attention that they need. And this woman, uh, who was kidnapped, seemingly, I guess she's seemingly rich. I guess she had some trauma team subscription or something. And so as soon as the player character removed the thing that was preventing the trauma team from locating her, the trauma team came in like five minutes later so. Yes, they did show plenty of the trauma team. They, that's, that was one of, high, one of the highlights of the show. And like, if you look at screenshots of the game, or I, maybe even in the trailer, there are there is footage or images of what they look like out there. In fact, in, in my last video, the hour-long video, while I'm talking about the trauma team, I put up a screenshot of what they look like. And yeah, that was pretty much them. Uh, let's see. Juan Silmon... Primera, hey Yong, how deep is the customization? I mean, eyes, color, hair, beard, style, color, skin color, augmentations. Um, they didn't really, they only picked the default model, so it's not like they dived into all the sliders or whatever they are to customize every aspect of the character. So I, I don't know. Uh, but they did say you can customize your face, you can customize your hair, give tattoos and all that. I would imagine it's going to be pretty extensive. But I didn't, they didn't show anything to where I can like extrapolate further beyond the fact that there is an extensive character creator. But again, to what extent? Like, I don't know if you can like pick skin color, for example. I, I would assume you can, but I don't know yet. But yeah, different hairstyles, different beard styles. Um, eyes, I'm assuming, is something you'll be able to customize, especially like. Eye color is something that's really not a big deal in the world of cyberpunk because you can get, like, cosmetic augmentations 
and in, like cybernetic enhancements that just for cosmetics. So I would imagine like in twenty in Cyberpunk twenty twenty, there's just some stuff that you can get just for the looks. Like you can change your eye color. You, you can get eyeballs that you can choose what eye color you want it to be and stuff like that. So I'm assuming customization is something that will permeate throughout the whole game, and it's not just confined to what you pick in the character creation. Like, I'm assuming you... you I, I would hope you, you can change your hairstyle and stuff like that. Because cosmetic enhancements is just... With all the technology within the world of cyberpunk, it's just not a big deal to change hair and stuff like that. But how deep that goes, I don't know. What would you rate the demo? Zero... From 0 to 10? Uh, 11? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if... If that's fair, but I honestly 11 because I was expecting a 10 and even then I got an 11 it, it went above and beyond My already very high expectations and I thought the demo like I was like no way it's gonna live up to What I think this game should be or my expectations of, of how uh, Of this being like this cyberpunk dream come true turns out that they It all lived up to all my expectations so, an 11, honestly, 11. It's that good. Um, Cynthia Dringas, how genuine do you feel like the non-linear non mission structure will hold up? Very confident, because uh, if, if you, you know, look at the Witcher series, and Witcher 3 in particular, there are lots of quests where things can play out a number of different ways, and certain characters can live or die based on your decisions and stuff like that. So it's not like CD Projekt Red doesn't have a track record of doing stuff like this, narrative-driven, choice-driven RPG experience. And then on top of that, based on what I saw here, based on all the, option, all the dialogue options you could choose, what ramifications that could all have, based on what the player went for, I'm very confident that, yeah, mission structures will be non-linear and in fact at one point the developer highlighted how there will be multiple opportunities throughout a mission to change approach like Jackie for example kept asking are you sure you want to do it this way at various points throughout the whole demo so you know at that point you could say you know what maybe I want to take a stealthier approach or you know what now nah, let's just go in guns blazing or or so yeah it definitely most definitely confident that uh, the missions are going to be very dynamic. Mm. Let's see. Shadowmaster983 online features. They didn't talk about that, but they did say that when the game launches, it won't launch with online. It is going to release as a, prime, as a primarily single-player experience, but they didn't rule out that online will be added later. In fact, we know that they're like working on some online things. But it's just they're not going to prioritize that over single player. They, they want to get the single player out first and then see how they can implement multiplayer from there. So online features will be implemented after the game launches down the line. But initially, it's just going to be single player. And I, for one, couldn't be happier about that. Uh, Oscar Stoker, were there animals? Yes. Uh, one animal I saw was a cat. Uh... And I, I talked before about how the player jokingly pointed a gun at the cat as if to shoot her, but then, like, to, to shoot the cat, but then walked away. Um, so, yeah, street cats, I'm assuming there might be, like, dogs and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't expect wild animals like a cougar or a rhinoceros, you know, but, uh, like, street animals, you know, rats and stuff like that, I would most definitely expect given that i saw a cat um how interactive is the environment uh pretty interactive from what i've seen like there the ads that are strewn about if you interact with the ad the your hud will update with like a marker showing where you can get the product that the ad lists uh when you're shooting you can see like a lot of cool destructible uh effects happening all around like and at one point during the final boss battle against Royce, the Maelstrom gang boss, like the player shot at this car lift thing, and then the lift just kind of dropped and the car dropped with it. And so it, it looks like they're trying to make the environment as interactive and immersive as possible. And also all the HUD elements, like when you're taking the elevator, it's not like, 
like a menu pops up and says, where do you want to go? It's like you have to look at the at where the holographic um, buttons are and, you, you know, you pick the one that you want. So uh, all the HUD elements, it, it, it feels like they're trying to make it so that you're interacting with the objects and not like um, like uh, a separate menu pops up to interact with that object, if you know what I mean. Uh, like everything just happens in the world, not in separate menus. So in that sense, lots of interactive elements. Um, Lepus Heart, how much freedom do you have in the game? Lots, seemingly. Lots. Ridiculous amount. You can go anywhere, do whatever you want, seamlessly. And uh, yeah, this is something CD Projekt has expressed. Lots of freedom. Obviously, you know, the demo... And there were aspects of it that I'm sure were scripted and stuff. This is all vertical slice, so how that permeates in the final product remains to be seen. But, you know, based on what that demo showed, what their ambition is, it's going to be as free as you would like it to be. It's just going to be one of the freest things ever. Mm hmm. Uh, Jonathan Allen Carr, is Mike Pondsmith a fan of yours? He He's actually... When I met him uh, in the Cyberpunk 2077 demo area, he was like, wait, you, I know you, you're young, yeah. So actually he follows my content apparently. Um, and of course I told him how much I love the, the Cyberpunk lore, that I, how engrossed I was by the 2020 tabletop setting and all that. So we had just a nice conversation and we both yeah i guess he follows my content and i don't know if he's like a fan but he's certainly he's familiar with uh, my work and my cyberpunk coverage so that's really cool uh, the vault dweller is the combat fast paced yes i would say it's pretty damn fast paced again lots of mobility options lots of maneuvers you can do and uh the shooting is very fast and frantic and um it's just always there's always a lot going on on screen is what I noticed in the demo, and the enemy seems pretty smart. So uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely very fast paced. You you'll get an adrenaline rush out of every firefight. Definitely much faster paced than Deus Ex. I wouldn't say it's like Call of Duty level. That's like I would say between between Deus Ex and, and Call of Duty, like somewhere in the middle. Mm, especially with the reflex booster where you can like slow everything down and pull all kinds of crazy shit it, it, it feels visceral that's what i'll say the combat feels visceral even if it's not quite as fast paced as call of duty mm. do cutscenes have the same graphics as gameplay yes 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 they do much like the witcher uh three it's not like deus ex where you know, sometimes you get like a pre-rendered cutscene playing. It's not that at all. The cutscenes happen in engine, much like Witcher Three. So all the cutscenes look exactly like they would if you would to if you were to play the game. Gameplay and cutscenes graphically, nothing separates them. Um, hmm. Uh, green tea. Do you think the game will stay relevant for the long run? I don't know. Uh. I mean, you mean in terms of like leading up to the game's launch? I would say yes, because the word of mouth has been so positive, And I mean, people haven't even, most people haven't even seen the demo yet. So yeah, I think the next year, you know, if they, if they can show that demo to the public and blow them away like they blew me away, that'll give it even longer legs for, for anticipation leading up to the, to the game's release. And uh, yeah, with, with CD Projekt Red having such a good track record of quality products, even if it takes them many years to finally get these games out, I would say, you know, they should take all the time they need. And I think people will support them and tune in and uh, the game will stay relevant because it's CD Projekt Red. Uh, Alan Allerkin. Uh, what do you think about the color palette? Is it like playing a futuristic GTA 5? Is there a real-time night and day mode? If so, how does night mode look like? If you want to know what night looks like, again, watch the trailer. There are bits and bits and pieces there showing what the city looks like at night. Looks really good. Has, has a bit of that Blade Runner vibe, so I'm satisfied with that. 
the color palette during the daytime, the colors really pop, actually, which is very strange for a cyberpunk uh, game where it's usually murky and dark and kind of washed out. But uh, like during the day, at least, it's, it's always like overcast. Not here. It's like bright sunlight and lots of neon signs and billboards and uh, lots of colors going on with people's hair colors, clothing, everything. But, uh, yeah, it, it, um, it fits that rock and roll vibe that Cyberpunk 2020, the tabletop, has. But I will say again, that doesn't mitigate some of the darker elements of this game. Like, the game is still... It's still... Sh on the, in the demo that I saw, there were a lot of things where I'm like, that's fucked up. So... Like, the contrast... I don't know, the, the contrast and, and the color palette versus some of the tones... It makes for an almost more compelling experience, if you ask me. If everything was super murky and then, like, the... And then the circumstances, the the setting, and the situations that occur, if all of that was just super dark, then then it just wouldn't have the same effect as when you have, like, a vibrant-looking city, but underneath all that, there's all this shit. You know, I think that has a bigger effect. That contrast makes for a greater effect than if everything were dark. So the yeah i don't know it, it's a nice balance that's what i'll say i think the trailer didn't doesn't do justice the fact that this game isn't all bright colors and like it, it's it can get pretty dark so um let's see some people asking if this will be uploaded later yes so for those who can't stay throughout the whole thing don't worry uh, this will be archived on my channel, so, you know, don't worry about that. Uh, let's see. Joseph, did you see you can fly uh, AV, so like aerodynes and stuff like flying cars? In the demo, they didn't show flying, like that you, the player character, can fly or drive flying cars. All they showed was, you know, ground vehicles, but... It's already been confirmed that you can also drive motorcycles and that and they hinted at driving cars being a big part of the experience. So I would assume yes. I'm not sure how free roam it's going to be because that just I mean, rendering the city from the ground is already a, a big undertaking. I can only imagine what an undertaking would be to allow players to just free roam with a flying car and just look at the city from, you know, from on high. I would assume it's going to be a little more on rails if they do have, like, aerodynes and stuff, because it just... I don't know. Maybe they'll pull some miracle, but... So, yes, that that's going to be a feature. How far they take that feature remains to be seen, so... Yes, yes to flying cars. Mm hmm La 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 la. HUD, is the HUD minimalistic or crowded? I answer that. Overall, pretty minimalistic. Mm. Uh, Davison in Corp. Hi, Yong. How did the dialogue flow? Was it like Witcher 3 with a lot of pauses between lines? Or more fluid like natural conversation? So aside from some of the over-the-top, some of the cheesy dialogue and over-the-top delivery, in terms of the flow, it was immaculate. It was immaculate. Like, the there was one segment where the player character meets up with the corporate and then, like, one of her bodyguards pins V down and, and, to, and then, like, jacks some jacks into her brain to to interrogate her with a life, with, with a truth or lie detector test. And, and er, just, it's like a cinematic happening from a first-person perspective. So it's the, the, the dialogue, the animations, very smooth. And then at a later point, there was the whole Mexican standoff portion, which I detailed in my last video. That whole thing, like no awkward pauses, everything played out so smoothly. And save for the occasional prompts where you can like pick a dialogue option, that's the only time you might see like a pause. But when dialogue is flowing, it flows really well alongside the animations. And uh, yeah, just, just watch my last video and how I detail that whole scene it just it was so natural looking and uh 
yeah, so don't worry if it about awkward flow of dialogue. It's 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 very well done. Hmm. Ryan Loveless, what are the facial animations like? Are they any good? From what I saw, yeah, they were all pretty damn good. Um, I will say this is not like as photorealistic as something like Last of Us Part 2, but it is hyper-realistic. It's got its own like art style. Like, it, like it, the character models look like very slightly like cartoony. Not like, cartoony is the wrong word, but they've got like that animated feel um like a little they look a little less than real people like a little less because it, it just like unlike last of us part two where it's all about that photorealism so mm -hmm. but yeah overall facial animations looked pretty damn good nothing no issues there i wonder if they're doing like performance capture or are they hand animating everything. That's something that I, I am curious about. Um, some people asking about whether there's suburban or, or countryside or if, like, or rather asking if there's countryside too or if it's all suburban. D do note that there are six districts. In fact, I have the, the brochure thing right here. Um, there are six districts and you know, you've got the metropolis, the city center, uh, you've got like some more Asian-like areas with bazaars and markets, narrow alleyways and all that. And then there's some areas for the wealthy, uh, some suburban regions, and then um, more dangerous overrun parts of town, and then some like industrial areas. So nothing here about like countrysides, but I wouldn't rule it out. I'm, I'm, I don't know though. I personally don't know. Mm hmm. So Dean Cuddy again asking if if you look down, can you see your body? They've already confirmed yes, you can, and yeah, that was something that was visible when sliding, faulting over. You can see your legs and arms and all that. <laughs> mm. Zach D, what weapons were shown? Uh, weapons that were shown included, uh, a pistol that had, I think, an alternate, uh, alternate firing mode. I don't know if it was, like, a separate pistol or the same pistol that the player picked up, uh, in her apartment. I think it was the same pistol. And, you know, you could shoot normally or you could, uh, like, bounce bullets off walls, revolve, revolve for Ocelot style, and you can, the HUD would show the trajectory so you can, like, uh, pick off guys hiding in some corner and stuff. There was a shotgun that had that could shoot through walls through structures so um if you scanned an enemy if you scanned an enemy and they like took cover behind a wall or something you could and you can like see through the wall based on the fact that you scanned them you can like just turn to the wall and shoot them and blast them to smithereens um and that shotgun had a normal shot and a charged shot there was also that one smart rifle that had homing bullets, which was one of the coolest things ever. Like, you could see the trail, like a smoke trail or something of the bullets. So, it, when, when you sh whenever you shot, especially in reflex mode, it just looked like a swarm of, of, of bees, but they're bullets, and you could see them all shred the enemy apart. It was awesome. And then there was one last weapon that I saw was this corporate rifle that was, like, fairly powerful. But that one was just um, all about power. Just, sh like, the shots would just... It was just, they would just go straight, but they might, like, stagger enemies from time to time. So, yeah, we saw a wide variety of weapons. Um, Stevie E, is there interplanetary travel? I don't think so, but I think there was one of the rumors that, that, the, the, the one uh, article that broke the story that, that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 would be present at E3, that there would be a trailer and then a behind-the-scenes, behind-closed-doors presentation and that wall running would be a thing in this game. They also said that there's one mission where you travel to the moon. Considering they've been right about everything, I would I would say, yeah, you'll be able to travel to the moon at the very least. Because everything they said prior to E3, it all turned out to be exactly as they said based on their sources. And if their sources are telling them that you can travel to the moon, 
at this point, I'm bound to believe them. Uh, this is from website Game Pressure, I believe. Mm. Did they reveal any sort of, uh, this is Rodney Harris, did they reveal any sort of perk system besides the cyber implant enhancements? Uh, they talked about it. They talked about how there is your stats, your attributes, like, you know, uh, uh, strength, constitution, cool, intelligence, and all these things. There's that, there's skills, and then there's perks. And those three will somehow work together to ultimately um, formulate the, the kind of skill sets your character has. But they didn't really go dive deep into that. So, um, but yes, there's going to be a perk system that is separate from the cyber enhancements. But uh, how that works, I don't know. How exactly that works. Um, Marion of Sintra. Is the character customization similar to the pen and paper Cyberpunk 2020? I mean, characters and like character customization in video games will never be the same as character customization in pen and paper where your imagination can just run wild. All I'll say is that there is character customization. You can customize the face, hair, uh, tattoos, stuff like that. And you can pick, like, life path, like a backstory, like the life path system in the tabletop Cyberpunk 2020. Though not to, the, not to that extent. Like, I think there were, like, three things, like, why are you in Night City? Uh, how you, like, growing up, what was it like growing up? Or, like, I don't remember exactly, but there were three things, and from those there were three other things you could choose. It's like Mass Effect, where you could pick, like, some predefined things. Um, but, uh, I'm not sure how that will affect your character, the narrative, but you can, uh, on some level, pick backstory elements for your character. So, no, it's not exactly the same as the pen and paper. I, I would even say it's not as extensive as what you can do in the pen and paper, where it's all about your imagination. That's what pen and paper RPGs are. It's imaginative storytelling. But you can clearly see the influence from Cyberpunk 2020 um, in the character customization. So it'll feel familiar if you're a fan of Cyberpunk. Mm. Let's see, let's see. Man, man, there's a lot of questions. Sorry, if I, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be able to get through all of them. I'm going to read some from the Super Chat. There's a couple here. Um, I've been reading from just the regular chat this whole time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've answered some of these already. What did you think of Gunplay? Is it arcadey? It's definitely not arcadey. I mean, I don't know. It depends on what your definition of arcadey is. If you mean like Call of Duty, where it's just... You're picking them off super, super quickly and just... Then no, I wouldn't say it's that arcadey. But it, it was fast-paced enough where maybe it could... Have, it could feel a little bit like that, but primarily it's an RPG, so you see like how much damage you do per bullet, and um, you know enemies depending on how high their level are, they they might be really strong, um, and so it's more more akin to again like Borderlands or Division, but less bullet spongy enemies. Like that stuff, that stuff's a little better balanced, so it. It feels like you're shooting people and not like, uh, like flesh disguised as, as fucking, I don't know, diamonds or something. Like, like it doesn't feel like you're, sh like you have to shoot them a million times before this flesh, flesh and bones human being is finally taken down. That's always been like a little off-putting to me about, or like a little immersion breaking about some other games. Here it feels like, yes, you have to shoot them in a couple times, but it's... It's balanced enough where it feels like you're shooting people and there's this memberment and all that. So it, it, it feels good. It, it, if, or from what I saw, at least, it seemed like it felt good. Uh, uh, slowly, now are. Can you speak more about the combat and the, and the melee specifically? Do you think the first person perspective distracts from it? Also, do the enemy feel bullet spongy like the division? So no... 
and not like the only enemy that was bullet spongy was the final boss in the maelstrom gang hideout um the the royce he was the only guy that was like bullet spongy but it made sense because he was wearing an exoskeleton at that point so you had to shoot him a number of times and get through his thick armor but just like regular goonies it didn't feel like you had to shoot him a couple times it's not like one shot takes him down but it was um again it was balanced enough where it felt very impactful when you shot it didn't feel like your shots didn't have any impact. It, it also helps that based on where you, where you shoot, it seemed like different animations or different reactions will happen. Like if you shoot if you shoot enemies in the legs, enemies will react appropriately and stuff like that. Uh, as for melee, the only melee that I saw, I would say, was um, when when the player character pulled out the mantis blades. Uh, they were like using that to hang from from the wall, and then there were two enemies below. Uh, the player Assassin's Creed style assassinated one of them, and then the second guy just like swung that thing around and chopped the guy's head off. So I didn't see enough of it to be like to to determine whether this is excellent, an excellent melee combat system. But there is going to be a melee system in place, and the first person didn't really detract from it. I would say, if anything, it made things cooler because you could see the arm swinging around swinging around and then chopping the guy's head off which like flew in the air and landed on the ground so it was very cool actually um mm -hmm. uh jason brown how do you imagine the game working purely as a net runner here's the thing they they didn't show much of the net or the matrix in fact they they didn't show show it off at all so i don't know i don't know if like every mission will have options where you can like hack stuff and uh you know complete missions that way but considering netrunner is one of the three main classes in this game i would assume that if you want to focus on hacking you can do that and there will be viable ways to complete missions using hacking abilities uh but so far you know the only things that i noticed in terms of netrunner include you know opening keypads and uh you know hacking into into locked areas and stuff like that but i'm assuming there's there's more to it than that but for now we we, we won't we don't really know uh to what extent that goes uh jamie hutchinson do you see this out next year i don't think so i think it'll be out in 2020 yeah because uh just based on like, again, based on what Mike Pondsmith told me, he's like, you can wait a couple of years, it'll be worth it. A couple of years is more than one year. So, um, no, I don't think it'll be out within the year. But I'd say 2020 could be a much safer bet. Uh, SD Ravana, is the game world one map containing a single cont contiguous sandbox, or is the game world divided in smaller maps separated by loading screens? Nope, no loading screens. Everything seamless. 100% seamless from what I've seen. That's the ambition. Obviously, we only, we only saw a vertical slice. So I'm not going to say, like, that's 100% determined or anything. But this is what CD Projekt Red is going for. They want a completely seamless world where that you can just traverse at your leisure. No, like, like, bi like uh, separate sandboxes that you can, like, load into. It's just one giant uh, persistent world. Uh, uh, Lars Rohr H, how did the graphics look compared to the trailer? Pretty damn close, if not identical. The trailer, like, presents things a little more cinematically, so in that way it looks better, but in terms of the graphical fidelity, damn near identical, I would say, if not identical. Like, what you saw in the trailer, it was in-engine. It said in the, uh, in the trailer, uh, uh, when it begins, it says in-engine. The graphics were about as good, if not exactly as good, as that trailer. That's, that's why I kept saying, like, this, this doesn't look like it's possible on current gen. Like, it seems like it's a game for next gen based on the graphics that they presented us. But again, I don't know if they found some way to optimize the game so that it, like, they developed this new engine, CryEngine, or not CryEngine, Red Engine 4, 
who knows maybe they they found some secret formula to something to allow graphics like that to exist in in like PS4 and Xbox One but you know a lot of people assumed when they saw the trailer that this was like CGI cinematics and stuff it's not that's that's how it looks that's how the game looks it's crazy uh let's see Morpheus door will there be open world PvP as I said before uh multiplayer is something that will release after the initial single player experience is out I'm sure they're exploring PvP see what they they can do with that but not at launch mm -hmm. I I random says does the gunplay overshadow the story absolutely not that's the thing that I loved most about this in fact my favorite segment in the entire demo wasn't the gunplay although that looked good it was the story moments the the Mexican standoff scene between you Jackie and then the Maelstrom gang members that whole thing was so tense so quintessential cyberpunk like Mike Pondsmith cyberpunk like the core rulebook says never make the player feel safe uh, just always have that element of anything could go wrong, anyone could backstab you at any moment. That permeated perfectly. Lots of dialogue options, and based on what you chose, you could, you know, you could either calm people down or engage in firefights. No, gunplay did not overshadow story or dialogue choices or narrative in any way whatsoever. So rest assured. I, again, based on the demo. Um... What does Johnny Silverhand's music sound like? So I'm assuming you're talking about, uh, like, when V was in her apartment, you could hear the radio blasting off, and uh, there was, like, rock music playing, and then CD Projekt Red, the presenter was like, yeah, that's so Johnny Silverhand's music, who you may know from Cyberpunk 2020. It was, uh... It was like, it was like rock. You know that, that music that plays in the in the first initial teaser trailer from like five years ago the responsibility personal like that whole thing it wasn't that th that exact music but i would say it was within that vein that type of uh punky rock and roll so that's how it sounded like um groovy snake does the soundtrack give a classic cyberpunk retro wave feel or is it full of whoops no not it's not dubstep or anything it it's it's a combination of modern elements like again the whole like during combat i would hear the tactical mute soundtrack like the but but with synth like imbued throughout and it was beautiful it was awesome so yes uh, there's enough cyberpunk-esque sounds and musical cues to give you the feeling that you're in a cyberpunk world Mm hmm. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Lawfish66. My biggest worry is the new trailer doesn't match much like I saw with the first one. I was expecting something gritty, serious, and somber mood with a team, and it seems it's go gonna be the opposite of that. I would say that, uh, it, it, to me, it actually doesn't feel that way. And also, I'll say this again, the mission, like some of the stuff happening within the demo, was pretty dark. It wasn't stuff to joke about. It was pretty gritty, serious. Like the, the grittiness, seriousness, and somberness. Like it's not like that's not there. It's just during the daytime, the visuals emanate something of a vibrancy that might be jarring for some. But like the, I would say the attitude that the initial teaser trailer expressed hasn't really changed that much. It's just that that trailer took place at night. And it had like all these bodies strewn about and that chick with the mantis blades, she went psycho, um, with cyber psychosis. The only difference was honestly the, the, the time of day, if you ask me. Other than that, it's, it's, it's really not that different mood wise. But yeah, don't worry. Yeah, it's vibrant, things pop, but the world feels fucked up. The world feels like it's fucked, like it's ravaged, like like it's cyberpunk. So, yeah, the the trailer I don't think rep like shows that quite as much as it could, but the demo certainly did. So yeah, it's a mature, definitely a mature, serious game in a lot of aspects and some humorous elements in others, but for the most part, it's it's cyberpunk. It really feels like cyberpunk.
Um, Yo, boss man, what is the role playing like? Says Sang Min Yi ninety three. What if I wanted to straight up murder everyone or be goody two shoes or etc. etc. So throughout the encounters that I described, the meeting with the corporate and meeting with the the Maelstrom gang, in both situations you could choose to either try to resolve things peacefully or you could just you know decide you know what I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers. So yeah, uh, there's choice. You can. Role play however you like, and it's not about good or evil, it's about actions and consequences. So, uh, you know, if, if you shoot the corporates and whatnot, that doesn't have to be an evil thing. You, maybe you got rid of some scum of the earth, but that could yield various consequences, like the corporate, like, like um, Militech, the corporation that she represented, they might have, like, an eye out for you, you know, they, they might be looking for you because you killed one of their associates. Um, it might close certain doors, open new ones. That's more of what they're going for. It's not about good karma or bad karma. It's not about goody two shoes. There, in fact, I would say there's no such, really, not much in the way of being goody two shoes in cyberpunk. It's about survival. So you, you, you're doing what you got to do, uh, based on what you think will help you survive and based on what you think is right. But with every action you do, it, it feels like somebody will always suffer. That's a whole cyberpunk mythos, I think. Like it, it's just the world is too ravaged for for goody two shoe stuff. Mm. Jake Hansen, how much do you see your own character overall? So if you look down, you can see yourself. So you you can see the outfits you're wearing that way. During cutscenes, there were like a couple of those throughout the demo. Um, your character model is fully on display based on what camera angles the cutscene decides to to choose. Uh, in your inventory menu, your character model's there, and as you equip or unequip stuff, it'll be represented live within the, the inventory menu. And then, um, yeah, I would say those are mainly the three ways that you could see your character. You could also, camera would pan out to third person. Um, if you were driving, you could choose to drive in first person or third person. Uh, the camera didn't, like, swoop to the side, and so I couldn't tell if I could see my character from a third person perspective, like, peek into the car. So I don't know about that, but I, I would assume you can see your character model. That'd be weird if you couldn't. So I would say often enough. Like, you're not constantly seeing them. Most of the time, it's, again, you're seeing through the eyes of your character, but there are ways that the game shows you how badass your character looks. And so there's enough of that where I wasn't bothered too much by the fact that it's first person only, especially because the way they leverage first person to immerse you in the world is so on point. Like, it makes up for all that. Um, so can you talk about the character creation system? I already, I've already talked about that. Uh, again, I, I just don't know enough. Uh, we know you can customize tattoos, face, and all that, but to what extent I, they didn't show us because they picked the default models. Uh, any colorblind options? I don't know, but you can certainly... That's something that you might be able to request to CD Projekt, see if they can do something about that. Mm. From what you have seen so far, do you think Cyberpunk can stand with The Witcher 3? I would say... Again, if, if this is... if the if the demo is representative of the final product, uh, CD Projekt or, or uh, Cyberpunk 2077 will not only stand with Witcher 3, it'll surpass it, in my opinion. And it also depends on your taste. Like, do you like Cyberpunk or do you like fantasy? If you like fantasy more, then Witcher 3 might always be the defining experience. But uh, for me, as a fan of Cyberpunk and as someone who's played Witcher as well, I would say this is Cyberpunk is vastly more ambitious and its execution seems just incredible so far. Beyond words, honestly. Like, and this isn't... The demo wasn't some footage. It was running live. Somebody was playing the game. So the game exists. That code that was running, like, it was actual code. So it's a thing that exists. And it's crazy because it, it looks so impossibly good sometimes. Uh, Xander Staka, do you think graphics will be greatly downgraded? I wouldn't say greatly downgraded, but for current gen, yes. I figure it's got to be downgraded on some aspects, but if it ends up launching on uh, consoles or next gen consoles, 
then no, I think it the graphics will look like that. It, the game didn't look fake at any point. It looked like a game that was running. It was just a game that looked prettier than almost anything I'd ever seen. Um, and I would imagine that if you play this on PC, based on how powerful you, your rig is, you can just pull all stops and you can make this game look as gorgeous as you want. Mm. 2019 game of the year decision will be the hardest of all years previous. Do you think Cyberpunk 2077 will beat Death Stranding or The Last of Us Part 2? I don't think Cyberpunk will be out in 2019, so, um, you know, that's that. I, I straight up don't think it'll be out by then. But it has a pretty good chance of being even more compelling than both of those games. Honestly, if you ask me, uh, not to discredit either of those games, I'm looking forward to all three of them, but this is just, 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 uh, it's, like, it left me speechless. It, it truly did. Uh, load times been asked about yet? Yes, no load times. None. Like, I'm sure, like, there are little tricks, rendering tricks that are happening as you're moving through the city. Like, it's not like the world is always 100% rendered. That's just not how it works. Like, if you're going through, like, a narrow alleyway, I'm sure there's some stuff going on where some things are rendered out, and but think, but you, the player, can't see that. But whatever illusions they're pulling to hide the fact that things are being rendered in, they're, it's an, an amazing illusion. Because the world, from my eyes, from the eyes of the player, it'll, it's pretty much seamless. It's It's... No loading screens whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Quantum harmonics. Are the damage indicators cheesy or tasteful? I would say it's... um They're not like huge in your face or anything. They're like red letters that kind of just pop up and disappear very quickly. So uh, I wouldn't say it's like tasteful per se. Frankly, me personally, I would probably, I, I would remove that. Like, I, if CD Projekt Red offers the option to to get rid of that, I, I personally would turn that off. But it's not like super distracting, weird, cheesy, no. It, it's just there. Uh, and it, it's, it's in red letters and it just flies off and goes away. And uh, it, it's just, it's there. It, it, it's some useful info for those who are into that. Mm. So voice acting, I already talked about that. A little over the top, some cheesy dialogue. Might fit the attitude of cyberpunk, but I, I hope they can dial it down a little more for some of the more serious moments. Uh, PvP, talked about that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, did the guns, how did the guns look? Did they look easy to control? They looked like cyberpunk weapons, like the stuff you'd find in Blade Runner. The stuff you saw in the trailer, like that design uh, language. Like if you look at the trailer and look at the guns and stuff, it, it's like that should give you an idea of what the weapons will pretty much look like in this game. Were they, did they look easy to control? Yeah, it just played like a, any, like it played like a shooter. So you could aim over the shoulder, aim in the, with with your sight. Although your cyber enhancements add further um, options, like uh, if, if you get the ocular enhancement, you can like zoom in with your eye and then shoot distant enemies. Um, if you like the reflex booster allows you to slow down time, you can like if you can, you can like jump high and pull some stuff there. So yeah, easy to control and then lots of cool options with cyber enhancements and I'm assuming even more options will open up as you gain skills, perks, and as you increase your attributes with every level up. Um, closest comparison to the game's combat? I'd say between, I, I guess I'll say what I said before, between Call of Duty and Deus Ex, it's like in the middle somewhere. Uh, but also with like elements of Division and Borderlands in terms of like the health bar and the numbers chipping away as you shoot. The hour popping up as you shoot the enemies. Uh, Surf and Turf, did they talk about difficulty or progression? Uh, they said that, you know, like, you can die pretty quickly if you're careless, I believe, at one point. So, you know, you, you can't just... 
I don't know. They didn't talk too much about difficulty and progression. They just said, you know, you can't, you're not super, you're not like a superhero. You are superhuman in a lot of respects with the cybernetic enhancements, but by default, yeah, like if you, you can't just shoot your way through everything. There are enemies who, who will be higher level than you and those guys will make quick work of you if you're not ready. And combat can be brutal, it's visceral, and if you're not careful, you will die very quickly. So you have, you're have you always kind of on the move and trying to assess the situation and make sure you're not just like standing there and just running and gunning carelessly. But yeah, progression, they didn't talk about that much. Uh, Omar M.A., does being male or female affect social, social interactions? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I, we didn't see the male player character being played, so I wouldn't know exactly how, but CD Projekt has said that, yes, there are, there are going to be some differences in how you interact with people based on which, which gender you pick. And obviously, romance options and stuff like that, depending on whether you're male or female, that'll yield different, uh, different results. <clears throat> uh, Doug E was music, anything like Blade Runners. I would say there were definitely Blade Runner. There was Blade Runner influence, but it's not like they're ripping off Blade Runner. It's going for its own thing, but feels very much like cyberpunk and that's what matters. Um, Hey Young, yeah, this is from Red Swords. Did CD Projekt Red hint at showing any gameplay to the public in the near future? Yeah, they, that's what they want to do, but they want to make sure they get feedback from the from the press first, and then once it's ready, they once they feel it's really ready, they they'll show that version of the of the game to the public. Mm -hmm. Um. Harris Sheriff, how can you speak to everyone? How many options per conversation? Uh depends. Sometimes I saw two, sometimes I saw three, other times I saw four. I don't think I saw more than four at any given time, but that could only be because like I I don't think that's just gonna be a hard limit or anything. It just feels like uh there weren't any situations that called for more than four dialogue options at a time, but I'm not ruling out that there might be ones that have five or six. Maybe if, you know, if, if you're talking to someone who gives you information about the city or stuff and you have, like, uh, options to ask about um, different things, you know, that you might get a couple more options. But it, it's not like a wheel, so it's not like, it's not like Mass Effect where it's just a couple directions. It's a list of dialogue choices you can pick. So it's going to be like Witcher. So I don't think there is going to be a hard limit as to how many dialogue options there can be at a given time. Because it's a list, and they can make that list however long or short they want. Um, let's see. So, a bunch of this stuff has been asked already. Will the game support 4K graphics? I would assume so. Yeah. Uh... Absolutely. I mean, again, it, it seems like it, it, it's going to be a cross-generation game, so absolutely. Mm. Is the character creator allowing for different body shapes? I'm not sure. That's something, again, they didn't, they pick, They just picked the default um, female V, so we didn't get to see that in action. So for now, I'm not going to say yes or no. Whether you can make him like muscular or fat or skinny, I didn't see anything in that regard. Um, will there be any wall running mechanics similar to that in Titanfall? Yes, there will be. I don't know. If, it, it won't be exactly the same as Titanfall, obviously, but you can use a combination of wall running and like the Mantis blades to like traverse walls and stuff. It's really cool. Mm. So. Yasa, Shin, Farron, are there going to be different character classes? So, like the original tabletop? Um, or are we going to be playing the equivalent to the solo class? So the way they described it was it's going to be fluid class system. So you start out as a blank slate, and then from there you can lean into solo, techie, or netrunner, and then bring in perks from other classes as you, like, interact with um, other classes or factions. I don't know. 
But starting out, everyone pretty much starts the same, and then you develop your class as the game progresses. It's not like you pick something from the get-go. But I would say your character is going to be... Is, it, they're going to lean more towards a solo-type experience, but like you're going to be shooting stuff. You're not just going to be rocking out like as a rocker boy or whatever. Like You're going to be a mercenary, primarily. So that's something to keep in mind, but you're going to be able to draw skills from a wide variety of different classes as well. So we'll see how that works out. Mm-hmm. Uh, driving cars and motorcycles in third person? Yes, first person or third person, just for driving. Mm. Can you change the character's look throughout the game? Probably yes. They They didn't show too much of that, but cybernetic enhancements you get will have like a visual effect as well as mechanical. Uh, you can pick different outfits, different weapons, different gear, different clothes, so yeah. In terms of like hair color, eye color, haircuts, they didn't confirm that, but I would assume yes for those as well, because fashion is such an important part of the Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop. It's just, there's no way they won't take that as far as they can. <clears throat> Mid-Eastern Gamer, can you open any door and enter any room or place? I, f I feel like most stuff you could, like, go in there and play around with, like, open doors and stuff, but I don't think all doors ever. Like, when you're in, like, a mega building, I don't think you're, you're going to be able to go into every person's apartment, but I don't know for sure, but it does feel like you can... There's enough doors you can open where it always feels like you're, uh... Like, it always feels like you're, you're in there, in that world. But I, I, I think it'd be crazy to assume that you can just go in any building ever created, like, every floor, every, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we'll see about that. But there were a lot of doors that were openable, hackable, whatever. Like, there were lots of, just, from what I saw, you could go almost anywhere, pretty much. Doug E, does it ever rain? Is there a weather system? Not in the demo we saw, but CD Projekt Red has confirmed already there's going to be a dynamic weather system. So, you know, if you want n rainy nights that is that are classic to Cyberpunk, you're going to get those. Oh, God, people. A couple people are asking me if there are boop physics. Uh, not from what I saw. Like, at one point... um. Oh god, why am I talking about this? There was like a the, there was the scene where you were carrying like the naked uh sort of female like half dead female female body uh before the trauma team came in and like the breast was pretty much like right in front of the camera and I don't think there were okay, you know what? This is this this is not that important, people. I don't think so. I don't think they were from what I saw. This isn't dead or alive, all right? Go play dead or alive is that if that's what you want. Uh, JR, the legend, how is the sound effects? All the weapons sound really unique because, you know, they're cyberpunk weapons. So, you know, you got the usual bullet noises, but also some, like, you know, there's some other stuff, go other stuff going on there as well with these weapons being from, from a more futuristic setting. There's just the bullet sounds, the, the voice acting, and the, the just... The cityscape, the cars passing by, the aerodynes, aerodynes, the helicopters, and the, just everything. There's there's always sound that makes you feel like you're part of the world. So sound effects is something that I that I have to give lots of kudos to. Just you know, jingles you might hear based on the ads and billboards and stuff that are around. You occasionally you might hear NPCs yell something at somebody else and having their own conversations and stuff like that. Uh, so just a lot of attention to detail placed on the world to make it, again, feel lived in and alive. Hmm. Will there be acid rain? Uh, is something that has been confirmed, yes. So that's something to look forward to. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Somebody asks, Battle Royale? I highly doubt it. But, you know, I don't know. But again... When the game ships, it's going to be single-player only, and they're going to add multiplayer after. But I don't get the sense that CD Projekt Red is just random, just, just like, 
shoving in Battle Royale just to get a piece of the pie. No, I think they're just going to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, any parkour or climbing? I don't know if I saw any parkour. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there's like a fluid parkour system that I saw, but you can climb again using the Mantis Blades, and you can wall run and stuff like that, but it's not like like Assassin's Creed, or it's not like Mirror's Edge. It's nothing like that from what I've seen. But you are mobile. You're very mobile vertically as well. You can jump like a high. You can jump high. You can, um, again, run walls, slide, and do all these different things. But not Mirror's Edge. Uh huh. La la la. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm gonna do a couple more questions and then call it a day. But I think I've answered most of the, most of the, ones that people have been wondering about. Uh. Let's see. Mo Rahman, how seamless are the animations? Is it as promising as what The Last of Us Two presented? I would say Last of Us 2, just because performance capture is such a key part of it, I would say that Last of Us 2 had better animations overall. It's just the raw actor's performance being presented to us. So, I wouldn't say it was, like, that good, but damn good. Occasionally, like, there would be, like, animation pop-ins where, like, the character would, like, just, just kind of instantly shift and, like, play a different animation. but. That, like, there are kinks to be worked out in a game that's in such an early stage. That was very few and far between. Overall, though, in the cutscenes, in the first-person perspective, when... Like, again, when, when that one time where where um, one of the bodyguards from from the corporate, they, like, shove you into a, onto a car to do the lie detector test. They, like, hold you down, and you see it in first person. You're, the camera kind of, like, struggling and like your face right next to the car and then you can like look back and see the bodyguard like looking at you like this like all right you're gonna answer some questions and uh, it all looks very natural uh-huh mm -hmm. uh, i think that's i mean what else is there Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I, I feel like I've answered most of the questions here. A lot, of them are, a lot of them are repeats of what I've already answered. So for those who tuned in a little later, just, um, you know, uh, just tune in later. And, and when the stream is archived. Uh, I got a couple questions here. Uchiha Kagai, were there any hacking NPC abilities? Yes, you could hack NPCs. In fact, at one point during the Maelstrom... Uh, hideout mission where you're like shooting your way out of a lockdown the player character at one point sneaks up on one of them choke holds him takes him down and while they're on the floor forcibly uh like uh hacks into their <clears throat> into their brain and at one point at that point a couple interesting things happen one they use that as a means to like uh insert like a malicious virus that jams one of the weapons from another enemy nearby and also they get some information from uh the hacking like they they see a layout of this of this compound so you can get like map information you can uh, so you, not only can you affect the the enemies around you by hacking into enemies and by jacking in but also you can glean information that might be pertinent to the mission at hand so really cool stuff that was one of the coolest things that I saw. Yes, you can hack into uh, NPC uh, cyberware. And that was only one example. Who knows what other stuff there, there will be down the line. Uh, can you comment on the loot system? Oh, God. That's one thing that I just... Uh, there was a, a point where the player looted a corpse, but I don't remember if, like, a little menu popped up and then you could, like, pick and choose... I think, like, the stuff were just on the ground, and then you pick them up. That was what I mostly saw. But I'm pretty sh Yeah, I don't know. But you can loot corpses. We'll, we'll leave it at that. You can loot corpses. There is an inventory system. I just forget the minutia of it. Like, 
like was it what the interface looked like um and stuff like that like when you pick up money is it like laying on the ground or do you like is there a thing that pops up like in, like a hud element that you can then like say i want to take the the money I, like little like little square slots where you can like pick and choose what you want or something that stuff i'm not i don't remember too much but there is looting and there is inventory so similarly to witcher 3 so yeah and i'm gonna go through one last round and call it a day um somebody is asking about stealth uh i would say yeah there, there there were stealth elements that i saw like again when you you could sneak up on a guy and take him down with a chokehold and like sil silently take them down and then if you so choose to jack into their brain and then do some stuff there so that was a stealth element you can also use wall climbing and then do like an assassin's creed style assassination and so as for whether you can like go through the entire game without killing a single person or or something like that I don't know about that. Um, you would have to ask CD Projekt Red. That's something they didn't really talk about. I guess I'll, I'll ask them that another time. Whether you can do like a no-kills playthrough. But given the kind of world that Cyberpunk is, I don't know if that's... If making that possible is, is realistic, even. But yeah, I would say there are stealth options. And I would say, and they did say that one of the routes you could take for, for the mission shown in the demo where you had to like recover military gear from the Maelstrom gang is that you, you could ignore completely the, the corporate you met up with to help you in that endeavor. And you could just sneak in to the Maelstrom hideout, take it, and then get out and without anyone being the wiser. So stealth is something that they seem to be hinting at that, yes, it's, it's, it's going to be prominent. It's going to be possible. Sneaky Knight, customized weapons. Yes, yes. Uh, they didn't show it off, but they confirmed you can mod your weapons with different components, so like scopes and whatever other cyberpunky stuff, I'm assuming. Objective markers, tons of them. Tons of them, yes. Uh, like, not just objective markers, but markers for things you can interact with. So if you look around and there's a door, it'll say door. And then, like, if you approach it, it'll give you a prompt to open it and then... If you have a scanner and you use the scanner and there, there are NPCs or enemies nearby, the enemies will be highlighted in red. Uh, some objects that may be like a security camera might be highlighted and stuff like that. So markers are very prominent in your HUD. Maybe a little like they're small enough where it's not like overwhelming your 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 view. But, you know, there might some people might want to disable that element or aspects of that element because I can I can see a scenario where there's going to be a lot of different things happening on screen at once and a lot of different like words and letters describing different things. So hopefully that's something that uh won't be a problem or that can be mitigated. Is there a limb decapitation? Yes, there is. Uh at one point I saw the guy use the shotgun to blast off somebody's arm, blast off the legs. If you shoot him in the head, their heads will blow off. It'll blow up. Yes, there is decapitation. And it looks glorious, I might add. What kind of clothing and armor? The only thing we saw there was just the jacket, but if you look at the trailer and look at all the, what all the NPCs are wearing, it should give you a pretty good idea of the kind of fashion you can expect. Uh, any crafting at all? They didn't show crafting, but again, you can mod weapons and stuff, so there will be crafting elements. You can also uh equip yourself with cyberware by uh contacting ripper doctors who will be able to do surgeries for you so you can mod yourself mod weapons so yes i would imagine there's like some aspects of crafting strewn about any mini games uh like we might have seen hints of that with that sparring match we saw on the side so maybe that's something you can participate in I would assume there's going to be a there's going to be a myriad of activities you can do in this game like at one point I saw in the trailer there was like a bit, bit of footage showing some people playing pool at a bar maybe you can engage in in a game of pool as well level scaling they've already said there's no level scaling and that you have two uh forms of experience points sing for single play or for main campaign you've got XP and for side missions you've got street cred 
and street cred, the more of it you gain, the more people will know who you are and the more missions you'll be able to uh, like partake and the world just kind of grows the more street cred you have. Is the enemy AI good? From what I saw, yeah, they seemed pretty damn aggressive. I, I didn't see a... Uh, like, there wasn't anything I saw that stood out to me as, like, what is the AI What is the AI doing there? Throughout the whole thing, I was like, damn. Like, these guys uh, really want to kill you. Mm -hmm. Can you enter the buildings? You can end All the buildings that, that were entered in the demo I saw all happened seamlessly live, so you can enter many buildings. But again, I don't, I don't know if, like, every single building ever. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Our enemies, bullet sponges. I've already talked about that. Uh, I think we're getting a lot of repeat questions at this point, so maybe I'll call it a day here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are asking about nudity. Yes, there is nudity in this game. Um, both male and female. Uh, like for for the female, there was that that half dead body that you had to carry in the that in that intro section. For male, I saw like some bare ass uh, in the cutscene following that mission where you're in your apartment and you had a one night stand, or the female V had a one night stand with some dude and he was like naked and walking around. Um, yeah. And I think that's where I'll conclude for today. We're at an hour and 56 minutes. I've answered plenty of questions. So thank you for tuning in. I mean, if you comment in the, you know, if, if you leave a comment in the, in the comment section, I might be able to answer a couple of other things that I might have missed here. But I think I've answered pretty much everything I can answer based on what I saw. So... I hope you guys enjoy this video. Watch my previous two stuff. The well, the watch just watch my previous video, that hour long video. I do a play by play of everything that I saw. And then the video before that is just me hyping this game up like right after I came out of the demo. I turned on the camera and started just just venting about what how amazing this game looks. Uh, but I, I'm glad you guys are enjoying my coverage of Cyberpunk. More to come down the line. So look forward to that. Stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. And I will see you guys next time. Yong out.